heartbroken at the loss of her husband <coughs> two months earlier and desperate for companionship. Weeping throughout the session, the stranger left drained but happy. <laughs> Dora felt much the same. She was empty yet fulfilled with contentment and the hour <coughs> grew late. It was nearly midnight, she guessed, stretching her bone-weary limbs, then snapping off the front porch light. The fire had died to more than a scant embers, which she poked with listless stabs, yawning all the while. To back with us, Chelsea. The door, the knock on the back door was sharp and sudden. Dora dropped the iron poke, hearing it clatter on the tile hearth as if it were miles away. Every sense or every direction toward the kitchen door. No one ever used that entrance. It was locked tight, always. Bending down to scoop up Chelsea for support, for protection from who know what, Dora swallowed an, uh, an, an uncomfortable lump in her throat and made her way toward the shadow back kitchen. The candles had been snuffed out some time ago. The cold teapot sat empty in the sink. Again, the curtain door rattled under a series of firm knocks. Voices were raised, men's voices, <coughs> strangers. There were no doubt of it. Her heart was hammering so loud, she couldn't discern their ages nor their intent. Who could it be knocking at her door that time of night? Mustering every ounce of courage in her body, Dora called out, projecting her voice across the room. Who are you? And what is it you want? Her surprisingly firm, authoritative tone reminded her of Carolyn Hutter's dead husband, for whom she interceded last Tuesday. She flicked on the overhead light, and the kitchen instantly looked like home again. The countertop scrubbed clean, all four corners warm and inviting, until, with a pop, the light bulb went out, plunging the room into a shroud of darkness once more. Oh, that's not good. She blinked, willing her eyes to adjust. Her hands, usually warm, felt like ice against the cat's back. Chelsea's furry head was up, eyes and ears pointed toward the door, and a low sort of growl stirring in her throat. Steady, Dora. She clutched the animal tighter to her chest and eased her way across the room, stealing herself. Perhaps it was the police at last come to put her out of her business after all these years. The men on the porch knocked again, louder and more insistently, coming! She nearly shouted it for her own sake more than theirs. Stretching out her trembling hands, Dora pulled aside the gingham curtains that covered the back door and window and assessed the party on the other side. She was just looking through the window. Three men formed a broad, Human knot on her porch. Two younger ones on their eyes, their eyes wide with apprehension, and a larger man between them. His face lined with grief, although his direct gaze pierced hers with an uncanny measure of intelligence. We've needed, we've need of your services, ma'am. His rough voice easily cut through the small pain between them. Don't be afraid. We mean no harm. Something told her he spoke the truth. Though wise, his eyes always had a haunted look. If anyone was fearful that night, it was this thin man. Feeling in control again, her hands no longer shaking, Dora unlocked the door and pulled it open. Its seldom used hinges creaking in protest. What can I do for you, gentlemen? You made a wrong turn, have you? The younger men both offered tentative smile. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not at all, ma'am. The taller one on the right said, sound really our boys he our boss here once a well well, you know, he liked to um, you know. The older man leaned forward. He said, I need to speak to my dead father. I see. Dora stood at the man for a moment. They seemed sincere enough, but she couldn't take any chance, you know, not with strangers. Not at this hour. Um, and what makes you think I can honor an outrageous request? Oh. 
the le one on the left piped up. He said, oh, everybody knows you're a medium. <laughs> he pulled out a wallet, thick with bills. Trust me, ma'am, if we'll pay you for your service. <laughs> she frowned and shook her head. What you're asking me to do is illegal. Her standard line was when an unknown prospect knocked. If I recall the news story correctly, that kind of business is against the city ordinance. So it is, Dora, their, bar their boss barked, illegal as seen. The older man stepped across her threshold, towering over her, which is why we won't breathe a word of what happens this night, not a living soul. What did they say? What happens after midnight? You don't need to be in the place if it happens after midnight. <laughs> but you know I'm having a good time. Oh, I'm sorry, not me. <laughs> they were having a good time. Now to a dead one. She smiled the last of her concerns as a smile tugged at the corners of her mouth. His laugh was rough. Talking to the dead is your department, so will you help me? I swear on my father's graves, my intentions are honorable. Well, we'll see about that. With a slight nod, she stepped back and ushered them into her gloomy kitchen. Kindly give me a moment to get things ready. He get ready. You think I'm gonna pull out that bag? <laughs> okay, all right. Somebody know this business. <laughs> okay, let me get my candles. I got to light my candles. Come on, let me start. Let me put this on. You light my candles. Somebody else tell me what am I supposed to do? Oh, teapot. I forgot. Oh. Let me take a sip. Oh, what else is in here? You think? Some incense. I, let me see. Uh, that's it. I got a little incense from a candle. What else do you think a medium might have? Let me see if I can get this thing out here. I had to find it. Oh, no, I did not. I'm sorry. You know I had to find this. You know I had to find it. It's not like I had one in my closet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I had to get ready. Let me put my head that thing was on. So, uh, why would I use a fireplace? Have a fire going. The ambiance. Yeah, the ambiance. And then the fire causes what to appear on the wall? Shadows. Shadows. Now, you know, everything had to be right because you want people to see what you want them to see. I want them to see their family members coming. Because the more business I get, the more money, the more money I get. <laughs> so I tell you what you want to know. <laughs> okay, let me get back. I'm sorry. I digress. Okay. Um, she uh, lighting the candles with a steady hand. She directed the young man into a chair, well away from the table, lest they interfere with her centering effort. Um. Yeah. Um. Um, um. <laughs> you know we can put it on the show. <laughs> years of practice. Now she did it for years, so she knew what got their attention, what worked, and what didn't work. Now don't think that when people approach you, they're coming to you for the first time. They don't try.